the presentation that I have here, it's, it's a great one and it's really uh, relevant to today, uh, today's competitive market and, and what we can all do to make more out of the leads that we have, how to get our conversion rates up. So one of the most profitable things to focus on is upping, improving your conversion ratio of how you're working with your leads, how to squeeze more out of the fruit. So that's what we're going to be talking about here. Are we ready to go, DJ? You're on, brother. So uh, who is this for? You know, what, what are we going to be talking about? This is for all real estate professionals. This is for wholesalers. This is for rehabbers. This is for agents. So if you're on here, if you're on the call, this should fit within one of you and or if hopefully you're doing all of these together, right? You're acting as an agent. You're able to um, work in any one of those capacities. That's what it's really about. So really the, the professionals, the real estate professionals that are going out there to meet with sellers that are working directly with leads, okay? So in the next 60 minutes, and I'm gonna put a, I, I eliminated some slides uh, to keep this even uh, under 60 minutes here. So we're gonna be going pretty quick. So definitely take notes, have, have everything ready. And of course, this is going to be recorded. So uh, we're going to be able to uh, revisit this if we miss anything. So, um, But over the next 60 minutes, I'm going to talk about how we accurately uh, and quickly do our property analysis to vo avoid the deal, deal killing surprises, price reductions at the end of it. Um, how we display our professionalism and our credibility to really set ourselves aside from the other people, uh, our competition. Uh, the secret weapon that I personally developed and use to up my close ratio to a 33% close ratio, uh, which didn't happen overnight. So uh, a lot of work went into this and a lot of technology. So I'm going to show you the technology that I use to achieve this and uh, to really bring the, the growth to um, and scale to this. Now, the, the key to this is scale, because here's one thing that uh, we we on this topic of converting leads, what happens oftentimes that I see is there's, there's specialists out there. There's people that, that, oh, this guy in my office can close the deal no matter what, or I can close the deal no matter what. But it's a challenge to scale when you have a specialist that can do the, the close the deal, but you don't have a repeatable system that can you can put just about anybody that is coachable and willing to follow the system into really getting the conversion ratio that you would desire, okay? So my promise to you is that I'm gonna provide a step-by-step -step strategy for creating seller appointments that convert, right? So that you can have exponential business growth and have the scale within your acquisitions that you desire. So you can have that lifestyle that we all got into this business for, generally speaking. I mean, we, you know, a lot of us get into this for legacy and uh, wealth and growth. Uh, and all of this comes from how well we're able to buy our properties. So now is this, this might resonate with some of you. Are you nervous about wrong numbers at a seller appointment? When you go to a seller appointment, is that something that you're a little bit nervous? Do I have the right numbers? Okay. Are you hesitant about presenting low offers and losing deals because of that? right? It's a competitive market. Do you struggle getting contracts signed at the appointment? That's a big deal, okay? What is the real problem? What are we fighting? Is it because your market's so competitive? How many times have I heard that? Oh, my market's just so competitive. Eric, you just have no idea, okay? I'm in San Diego. I'm in, the, I'm in a competitive market myself. I'm, I came from Seattle, which was very competitive. I work with people all over the country. <laughs> um, what about the this one, the seller's expectations of value are just way too high. The market's just too competitive or they just don't have time, right? The, the problem is, is that most people just haven't made the shift with the shifts within their business to get to the level where none of those things matter. Okay. It can be as competitive as it needs to be, but we're still winning. Okay. So the, these are the things that you need to know. You need to have a system. I know we all know this. That's been really beat into our heads. And it's true. We need a system. We need to bring system, uh, a, a systematic approach to this topic. Okay? We need a system where we present our op options, they choose, and everyone wins. Okay? Instead of a 
one road or one one option or or one way you know road there and that's what a lot of people struggle with so we build a system that allows for the options so real quickly a little bit about who i am and, and so you guys have a little confidence in in what uh, and why i'm speaking to this topic uh well just a, a real quick background of uh, I've been doing real estate as a, operating as a real estate professional for 20 years. I got my real estate appraisal license right out of high school. So uh, my father owns a, a real estate appraising company and, and I picked real estate appraising as my trade right out of high school. So I literally got into the business underneath my father right away. Uh, and I appraised full time until from uh, 2000, essentially till 2006, 2007. Uh, when everything changed, and I began began investing in real estate with um, my wife, and we started, you know, we bought the uh, the ugliest house in the neighborhood and fixed it, moved in, and we did all that stuff, and we really fell in love with it. Um, I started managing the marketing and acquisitions for one of the top uh, investing companies in the country. Some of you guys may have heard of them, CT Homes. Uh, I moved from Seattle down to uh, San Diego and worked real, real closely with Paul, Dan, Conrad, uh, and JD in the growth of CT Homes down here in San Diego. So uh, not only were we building uh, CT Homes and all the systems there, but we were teaching. And that goes in line with um, something that is really true to me. You know, and, and Tony Robbins says this really clear. <laughs> Um, you know, if you want to be successful, find somebody that has done, ch achieved the results that you want and mirror them. Once I, you know, kind of found my, my crew that I wanted to roll with uh, way back in 2006, man, I just, I wouldn't let go. I, I, I uh, went to every boot camp I could, to, I went to every education I could, I signed up for everything and I poured everything into it. And that really, um, I mean, it made a huge impact in my business and, and it allowed me to not only go from doing the business in my, you know, in my market, but then really teaching the business and uh, some doors open where I was able to uh, lead the full immersion team across the country training all over the, um, in every major market in, across the country and, and developing one of my favorite uh, uh, trainings, which was a three-day training at the Fortune Builders, was the, the Office Systems Academy, where we I would break down for three days all of the systems that we did at CT Homes uh, in the, all of its detail. So um, I love that aspect of doing it because I believe the best way to learn is to teach. Um, and the second best way to learn is to do it, right? So if you're doing it and teaching and doing it and teaching, it's a really, really good um accelerator. So that's what I did. And, and what I really found my niche in was seller appointments, direct to seller marketing, and then carrying those leads all the way to the closing table. And so I really perfected myself as uh, a closer in the direct to seller uh, lane. So uh, I, I really am a huge advocate of, of continuing education and, and I've poured into um, you know, my education is as far as NLP, Neuro Linguistics Programming. So I have uh, five different um, cert um, certifications in that field, which allow me to really um, hone in on my craft of negotiating uh, and positioning alignment solutions with the, our client, you know, to create results. So uh, we love it. And, um, but these shifts that as I went through all of this, this training and, and seller appointments and all of it, uh, it all boiled down to five major shifts. Now, as we go through these five shifts right now, uh, this, this is kind of, it's a, a story of an evolution. And so what you're gonna see here is some of you are gonna resonate with shift one or shift two or shift three, uh, maybe even the fourth or fifth one, but it's all an evolution and we all will, are gonna find ourselves somewhere along this. So just know um, that there is a next level uh, for you to achieve. And, and we're gonna kind of go through that exactly. So, um, and these, these five key shifts um, really were, um, the, the critical ones that allowed for the scale to happen, uh, not only in our, our business, uh, my personal business, but in CT Homes and, and so many other hundreds and hundreds of other uh, clients that I had the, the, uh, the opportunity, the fortunate opportunity to coach and, and help through this. So the first one is consistency in analysis and numbers. Now this might seem a bit obvious, right? 
But this is a big challenge that I help people through where um, some people are still very stubborn on using uh, a Mayo factor or um, napkin math or, you know, oh, I just kind of ballpark it. Okay, that is a massive problem. So just know if, if that's you, uh, if, you're, if you're outside of a systematic approach on your numbers, uh, that is a massive weakness in your business. It's, it's really hard to scale when there's one person that's always kind of making up the secret sauce of what numbers make sense for us to buy or not buy. So just know that um, focusing in on your deal analyzer and the consistency of how you use it and the team around you can use it uh, is a massive advantage. It's just so, so powerful. There's so much that we do here, not only in the accuracy of the investment that we're about to make, but the negotiation tactics that go along with it. There's uh, how we can squeeze in uh, transactions that what I call engineering transactions to really work for the, everybody involved really goes down to how well you operate a deal analyzer. Where did you crunch those numbers? How do they look? How accurate are you? So I really focus on that. And we really did a, a, a good job of developing a deal analyzer that had the, all of the different components of our process all represented in the deal analyzer. So we could really see what their current mortgage was, what the as-is listing is, their, our cash purchase, the rehab, our ARV, our holding timelines, all of these things really uh, clear and um, precise for everybody on our team. So this is what we looked for uh, as we built out and making it so that the rehab numbers were all on that same sheet, just again, made for uh, speed of accuracy and uh, consistency. And this is one of my clients that uh, really, really just benefited from this right out of the gate. So he's, he's a, a really common story of um, where he was at the beginning of his investment uh, career. And he's going from kind of like one project to the next project. He, he really hasn't gotten out of the, you know, having two projects going at the same time. Um, but he, because he would get into himself into a project and because his front end analysis wasn't as accurate as it could be or should be, he always finds, he found himself on his heels, trying to solve problems that should have been found at the beginning, like his rehab numbers were not quite right, or he paid a little bit too much over here, or uh, whatever else. And so he was always, always having these nightmare rehabs, because he was always battling uh, his numbers just not being quite right. And so as we worked on this, this is where he really started getting accurate right out of the gate, and then having somebody else run numbers predictably to get those the answers uh, accurate. So um, preparation and credibility is the second shift. So once you get your numbers correct and you got that dialed in, and that shouldn't be too hard because we, if you're on this call, you should have access to a really good deal analyzer. And if you don't, definitely reach out to me. I, I can help you out there. Um, but the next step is how do you how do you show up to your appointments? How are you showing up with your clients? How are they perceiving you? And to know that it's so competitive out there that what does it take to get to the next level, right? So that what that means is that you're competing with the top real estate agents and investors in your competitive market. We get it. How many times have I heard, but my market's so competitive, Eric. It's just so competitive. Yeah, I get it. Okay, there's it's crowded out there. And the question is, you need a differentiator. How are you going to stand out from the crowd? What are you going to do differently? So this is what we, we need to be aware of. Don't, don't slide into the same common mistakes that all new investors, or it's so common out there, is to you know, just say all the same buzzwords like, oh, we buy all cash or you know, we close in seven days and you know, we pay all the closing costs. These are all those buzzwords that... that uh, have been overtrained in our industry. These is what people just say all the time. Oh, but there's no realtor fees, right? And these are the hammers and the nails and the hammers that they just try to beat down. Well, these, this is rookie language. This is what a lot of the rooks say out there. So just be aware that, that getting off of that beaten path is a big advantage. So this is one of uh, a sales trainer that, that I've had the fortunate um, time to, to spend with Blair Singer. And, and this is, 
this training that, or this concept that he introduced to me really resonates with me. And, and this is that confusion kills sales and confidence transfers. So we're always, nothing's neutral. We're either, you know, sending a, a message that we're very confident and we're um, going to, you know, bring a transaction to a close or we're, we're making things confusion, confusing for people and we're killing sales. So just remember that confusion kills sales and confidence transfers. Okay. So now we need to create clarity, right? Clarity creates the confidence and the confidence creates the closing. So this is the problem that we needed to shift into or what we needed to, to uh, solve for. Now, so as we're building our presentation for our clients so that we are professional, we need to leverage all of the experience of our, of our team so that we can really show them that it's not uh, an empty space working with us as far as if we don't have a ton of years of experience, if we don't have hundreds of deals under our belt or, or this, that, the other thing. A lot of people will, will use this, I'm a rookie um, type of excuses that holds them back. And so what I, what I really help people do and, and everybody on my team uh, help our clients do is really uh, understand how to break through that, that kind of rookie um, uh, start to the dance, you know, if you will. So we help them create a system that has their, all of their team represented, that shows the gratitude. This is the, the systematic approach that really starts showing up when you do things right. So we bring to the seller uh, a whole new approach. We introduce our whole team to them. We show them who our preferred clientele are. You know, who do we work? Who do we use for title and escrow when, when we complete transactions? We want our clients to know upfront how we operate and who we operate with. So I always bring testimonials as well, okay? I bring a full comp report always to my seller appointment so that they understand when we're talking about value that I'm not pulling things out of thin air, that there's some substance behind the conversation that we're having. Transparency builds credibility, okay? And then this is a really powerful um, part of my offer packet is that we, we, the last page is what happens after I sign a contract? So we break it down very clearly on a one pager. So after we submit the contract, the operations team will get in touch with you, inspection process, uh, the ongoing updates, who they're going to be talking to, what happens prior to the sale, you know, once the property sells completely, all of those things are all outlined for our clients prior to them uh, signing the contract or going through the process. Now, that just doing that consistently, walking your clients through this process. Uh, it's a sales process and you're building rapport and demonstrating uh, a systematic approach the whole time. And all of this builds confidence and that confidence transfers. It's tremendously effective. Okay, so um, this is a, a major, major shift that I would highly recommend that everybody does. And, and again, focusing on the consistency of your seller appointments. So if you have the same paperwork every single time, you're going to go through that same process every single time. So keep that in mind. Um, but that wasn't it. There was still a big challenge. There was still something that was missing that we had to, that we had to break through. So we broke through, we got through the third critical shift. The third critical shift is that we had to address the elephant in the room. The elephant in the room was that, you know, when we go to our clients, or when we're meeting with a seller, so often when we talk about a cash offer, we end up going into this discussion about, well, okay, what if you listed it? You know, what are you measuring this cash offer against? Well, a uh, list price would be, you know, if I could get 445, then, you know, the realtor commission of this, and then minus the closing costs and all of these things that come out, and then how much you would net is this, right? Uh, versus, you know, your days of market, all these different things, and against my cash offer, right? And I'm sure some of you get on the call have, do this with your clients. You try to bring a, a perspective to your cash offer, you know, like, okay, well, if you were to list it, this is what would happen in the napkin math, the war of the napkin math turns out. And I'll tell you, man, I have gone through this so many times, and it's a struggle. It, this is the, this is where confusion killed sales right here and when you're doing your napkin math and not only that but it, it also walks you right into a price fight and that is the worst thing 
uh, when you get yourself into a price fight is when you're arguing with somebody over, well, I can offer you this. Well, I think it's worth this. And well, I think it's worth this. And that's called a price fight. And uh, one person's crazy always. And one person wants this. Okay, I, I do not ever price fight. That's, you cannot, that's the biggest mistake that we, we have. And so, um, and that happens when all you have is a cash offer. If you only have one option and you're just, everything matters that you're just my cash offer. My, my offer is the only uh, solution or, or option I have for my clients. It's a tough road. So we needed to create more options because you know, this is the way the seller appointments go where you're sitting there talking with the client and you're going through your, your cash, you know, I'll, I'll close in seven days and this is my offer. And as soon as you get done doing your pitch, who's going to walk into that door? Who is that, who is that seller going to meet with? Well, so often it's a real estate agent or your competition that's just going to then uh, present another option or, you know, present a listing option that's going to make your cash offer seem so low and they go that route. Okay. And so how many times does that happen? It happens to all of us. So I really was sensitive to, you know, this, I was losing transactions over this. So I, I needed to step in front of this. So what, what did we do? We created a system where I would present all of the options, the client would choose and everyone would win. Okay. And no more napkin math that we got to get rid of the napkin math. So this is how we do it. We, this is, this was the shift that created a 33% close ratio for me. I would have a, I bring a net sheet that allows my client to see what they would net in these three different hypothetical situations. It, this is how much you would net in a cash off in a cash offer setting. This is how much you would net if you were to fix your property up and then sell it. And then this is how much you would net if you were to list it on the open market as in its current condition so that they can really see a net, net, net perspective, what's going to go into their wallet. Now, again, this is what we're trying to solve for on napkin math, but it all, so often falls short. So when we can present it in a very clear way, it allows that next step of that decision-making process to uh, show up. The, the option or the solution becomes very um, apparent, right? If the cash offer is pretty close to what they would net in another scenario, then they usually go with the cash offer. But if their house is in good, good condition and they're clearly gonna make way more by listing it, then we can support them in the listing option, right? That's the key, being uh, flexible, to identify what's best for them per their situation and be able to uh, handle it right there, okay? So the systematic approach here is that we have a, the solid paperwork that goes into this whole process where we have all of our note paperwork, we have a cover page that tells us about us, the testimonials, we bring all of the subject property information, then we bring all of the comp analysis and all of the paperwork, all in one systematic approach. This is where um, one builds upon the other to create the one-stop closing, right? And as you do this, it, you walk your clients through this and the decision-making happens right at the end. And it's, it's a really, really good approach. Now, this is a, a client of mine that, that uh, implemented this and, and uh, you know he prided himself or prides himself on being a technology guy. And uh, as soon as he could see the way we were presenting our offers and using the technology that we we are to do it, he was blown back. And he, um, I mean, he just exploded his uh, transformed his conversion ratio uh, just by implementing these steps. So as a quick recap, number the first shift, making sure you're accurate. Your accuracy has got to be on point. Number one. Number two, got to have your credibility and your, your process, the way you show up uh, on point. Your professionalism has got to be great because it's competitive out there. We already talked about this. And then having multiple solutions at the end. So when you're presenting with your client, then you can really um, have the solutions that matter to them. Okay. So those are the three shifts. Now, if you do that, I'll tell you, you're going to get more closings, period. Make those 
you're going to get more closings. But it's not over yet. Because if you do this really well, and if you have enough stellar appointments, like I surely do, uh, it becomes a bottleneck. All of this preparation becomes a bottleneck because that's a lot of paperwork. That's a lot of, you know, that's a lot of upfront work that would go on in order for me to achieve this. And of course it's worth it, but it became a bottleneck. It started slowing us down. That's a lot of paperwork, printing out all those comps, all the contracts, all of the cover sheets, all of, all of these things that, that we would take, right? So this is what we needed to solve for. It was just way too much printing. Not only that, but I freaking hate printers just like everybody else. We all know this scene from the office space and it is so true, man. I, I have literally lost transactions because my printer was breaking as I'm trying to print off all the comps and all the, the paperwork to run out the office. And especially if it's a short sale, oh my gosh, all the other extra paperwork that you would have to do. And so, I mean, I have literally lived this moment uh, with my printer, just wanting to yank it out of the wall and throw it on the ground. And I knew that there was a better way. So many of our other things are not paper anymore. So I started doing the deep research into what application could we use to facilitate what our seller appointment with all of the documents that I need, but through technology. So I wasn't printing so much. And I freaking scoured every application. I went through everything. And it was, um, I mean, it's just like impossible to, to find one that, that you couldn't, um, that you didn't have to compromise on. So, and I went through and, and scoured all the listing agents and looked at what they were doing, our listing agents doing it. And they had some really cool digital presentations, um, but none of them uh, you could sign, you, none of them you could sign the documents at the, on the spot. So that became a, 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 a bottleneck right there. So, and I'm a huge advocate of closing on the spot. So that was the critical thing. I wanted to be able to sign documents on the spot. And so, um, I mean, it got to the point where, I mean, I had a, a mobile printer in my car, no joke, the people that know me know that this is very true. I had uh, a mobile printer, I had a mobile scanner all in my car because uh, I lost one too many transactions because of paperwork, not having it or whatever else that I, I always had that stuff with me. And I would go into a seller appointment and bring that stuff into their house and print off contracts and all that stuff. It worked. It was a lot, but it worked. So we needed to improve this. And so the shift, this last, or not last shift, but the fourth shift that we made was going from the old school paperwork to the new school um, iPad system. Okay, this, is, this was the shift. Once we made the going from paper to digital, boom. Now the speed of everything that I was uh, looking to accomplish was a non-issue. Nothing, the, it, the speed was um, right there. It was drag and drop. Everything was done. It went from all the messy paperwork to on an iPad where I could scroll from one page to the next page. I could write on it. I could do everything I needed to do on my iPad exactly the way I needed it with no compromise. That was the key. That unlocked everything. So boom, now I could have all of the best presentation. I could be as thorough as I needed to to win the transaction and no printing, bingo, okay? So no paper, everything that I needed and bam. So now I'm, I'm linking all of these steps together and this is where the closing just, the closes started just going through the roof, okay? But it was still on my shoulders at this point. So this is all really cool. But going back to the, the principle that I said at the beginning is that specialists hurt us. If you have a specialist in your office that all the closing goes through one person or there's only one person that knows how to do everything, that's a challenge. That's a really big challenge for scaling. So we needed this system to be able to plug and play with the whole team. So it wasn't just me. So we, we built this and with this system, you can do everything um, digital in this, with this uh, and you can uh, record it. So we created trainings on how to record uh, every single step on this iPad and every single thing, we broke it down every, every way. And so now we have, uh, you can record the audio of the seller appointment. So on the application, so you can, uh, I can send out a, an acquisition 
person into the field with all of the correct documents, and then they can hit record audio while they're at the seller appointment and record all of the audio of that environment and bring it back for for a, a debrief, right? To um, problem solve what happened, what worked good, what didn't, right? This eliminates excuses. This is where we can now move anytime, anywhere. We can update our comps. We can update uh, our purchase and sale agreement. We can do all of that right out in the field. This is where it really matters, right? So because we were able to do this all in digital form, we were able to build out the trainings that showed exactly how we do each one of these steps, breaking down the seller appointment process, exactly what to do. So what do you need to win? Okay, you need a consistency and analysis. You need the preparation and the credibility so that there's no convincing, okay? There's, you need the true solutions so that you're not just stuck to lowball offers and losing out to agents and things, okay? You need the speed of implementation so that when they're ready to say yes, you're ready to say yes. You have everything you need to boom, take action, sign the contract, sign it on the spot. That's the highest point of conversion, right? Now you need the business systems to do all of this growth and scale all at the same place, okay? So I would encourage everybody on this call to hopefully you've taken some good notes and you can do all of these shifts, identify where you're at and get to that next level uh, right there. The, I would highly encourage everybody to do so. If you're interested, we have the, the easy button. We provide it for our clients. We have this uh, as a system that we uh, can talk about. Um, but know that, that I have been implementing this for over four years uh, across the country with uh, some uh, very, very successful uh, acquisition teams. So I started getting hired uh, right out of uh, my time at Fortune Builders by some of the, the coaches and by some of the, the real leaders within the organization on how to systemize their acquisitions. And so we really um, put this to the test in beating it up and, and making it as good as it possibly can be. So these are the, the people that uh, have been really uh, positively impacted by this. And, and we hope that uh, my goal is to help everybody do better transactions, close more of the leads that you're getting. Leads are expensive. Lead, opportunities are hard to come by. It's competitive out there. We need every advantage we can in order to uh, get the results, right? So um, I, I don't know where exactly I, I am on time. I feel like I went pretty fast through this, um, but hopefully there, we, that resonates with people. I do have a couple other things I wanted to share with you guys. Um, if you're, if you were interested in having any discussion with me, my team, Christian Weatherspoon, my uh, business partner, um, if he's on the call here. By all means, um, you know, raise your hand, reach out to us. These are our, our sites that if, if you want to check them out, we can copy and paste these into the, uh, the chat here. But, um, you know, our Facebook group. So we have a Facebook group that we'd love to invite everybody to uh, with real estate marketing and acquisitions. You can find that, um, you know, just by typing that in and, and we'll put the link out here. So uh, this is our small community that we're, we're growing, um, but where we have, uh, we keep this type of dialogue open and going, you know, marketing um, efforts and conversion um, techniques that we're using. So this is where that discussion looks at. And I even break down uh, seller uh, phone calls in this group. So if you're interested on, you know, hearing my feedback on seller appointment calls, uh, we break them down and post them in here. So uh, definitely check that out. Um, just about anybody can get uh, get something out of listening to a seller appointment critique. It, you know, I get I get a lot out of them all the time. And, and so I would imagine anybody can. Um, the other place to find us, if you want to just kind of follow along, if you're interested in what we're doing, how we're doing it, um, our YouTube channel. This is a channel that we're growing right now. Um, we, we put out a lot of content and uh, really specific content to uh, not only our, how we're uh, working with sellers and, and negotiating techniques, but um, the technology that we're using to drive as many seller leads as we are. So we're, we are marketing in over 20 different markets across the country for direct to seller leads. And so we utilize um, all the, the latest technology and text message, cold calling, lead management, all of that is, is our realm. 
Uh, so please uh, help yourself, follow along, make a comment. Uh, we'd love to help any which way we can. Um, but a little bit, I want to I want to dive just a, a touch further, um, real quick, and I want to show you guys, you know, kind of. Um, there's this is a, a resource guide that that I'm happy to share with everybody. Um, these are the all the resources that we're currently using um, to run our business. So people we get asked all the time, well, what data do you guys use? You know, what data provider? Well, um, right here, I show you exactly what data provider we use. And um, there's some bonuses there. So if you're interested in getting some bonuses on, on different things, um, which skip tracer we use for our data consistently is right here. Um, who we use for um, our, our data, our skip tracing, our lead generation strategy. So our texting, who we use and why we use, uh, you know, what texting platform do, do we use to achieve our, the results that we do um, that have been stellar. Uh, we're, our texting results, just for uh, for some context, we we're driving leads uh, well over, uh, well under a hundred dollars cost per lead in almost every market. Um, but we're what we're doing there is we're having over ninety percent deliverability rate, twenty percent response rate, and conversion ratios up and over ten percent. Uh, so it's like it's such a, a great time to be in the game uh, from that perspective. Um, so this is available to anybody. If anybody just wants to check out any of the resources that we utilize, uh, raise your hand, uh, more than happy to uh, share that with you. Um, this is where I really, really help my clients. You know, or us at Real Estate Funnel Systems, how you scale your acquisitions team. So I just kind of went over the, the, the seller appointment process that we go through. Well, that was a, a cursory, you know, that was an overview of the principles that we do, but it gets much more granular than that. Just so everybody understands, we really break this process down to having, um, what does it look like to have an inside sales associate, an operations or lead manager, what do they do? And then a closer, an asset manager, what do they do? Right? and really breaking down that process. What do they do? How do you measure them? Um, when do you know it's the right time to scale for that? How do you know if you should have you know, three people generating leads or who's the qualifying them? What, what does the closer do? That's the process that I break down and allow my clients to really see the scale to that process so that you're not just fighting the one-on-one -on -one battle that so many people uh, in, this, in this industry and field really battle. So that, that's just a little context um, right there. This is the flow chart, an overview. This is another example of, of you know, how we work with our clients to better understand the mechanically all of the, the exact process, who does what when uh, with the seller appointment. So when a lead comes in, who's talking with them? What do they say? How do they say it? Where do they get tagged in the CRM? What happens from that point? Then, then, then who, you know, it goes down to uh, the seller appointment. Who's doing that? What happens? Who, what's the desktop analysis look like? Then we have a phone appointment or a in-person appointment. And then we break down, you know, what happens at, at those appointments? Is it a cash offer? Is it a listing? Is it a no deal? What happens? Um, so we break all of this down for our clients to really uh, help them, again, bring that scale to their businesses. Um, but not only systematically, but what are the scripts? What are the words that we're saying? So we really get into what is a perfect sales call. So a perfect sales call looks, you know, what do we intro? How are we engaging with them about the condition of the property? What's, what's their value expectation? How do we handle all those different objections and set the proper expectations? This is again, what we really, really break down all the way through to um, the seller appointment. So meeting with them at the spot. So the advance agreements, how to, how to set the agreement prior to showing up there so that the seller is anticipating at your next move. That's a really big shift uh, in the way when you're presenting these things. So, um, this is a little, little insight to what we dive into, uh, in hanging out with me and, and my team and my group and, uh, Christian and I, we, we, uh, love this stuff and, and we, we love bringing scale to this, to this complex 
business model. So anyways, that's it. Um, hopefully that was good information for everybody. Um, oh, one last resource I wanted to, to share for everybody. When you do a seller appointment right, this is what it looks like um, at the end of it. When, when this is what I deliver to my clients, all uh, digital via PDF So uh, on, at the appointment. So they get a cover page, they get a letter to them, they get a, about our team, they get testimonials, they get subject property information, they get the compar comparable, um, the comps that we talk about with my handwritten notes. They get the more detail of the comps if I want them to have that. Then goes, they get the offer paperwork, client net sheet, purchase and sale agreement. Then group funds and then the, the last page there. So that's, that's what our offer packet looks like. And um, yeah, that's, uh, that's the winning ingredient for us.